Thank you, Mr. President and Dr. Delaney. If you will join me at the podium, it, it is an honor for me uh, to administer the oath of office uh, for you as you come into to office. Thank you. And will you repeat after me? I will. I solemnly swear. I solemnly swear that I shall carry out the duties of the President of the South Carolina Medical Association that I shall carry out the duties of the President of the South Carolina Medical Association to the best of my ability to the best of my ability I shall strive constantly to maintain the ethics of the medical profession I shall strive constantly to maintain the ethics of the medical profession and to promote the, the, the best health and, and welfare, the public health and welfare. And to promote the public health and welfare. I shall rededicate myself and my office. I shall rededicate myself and my office. To maintaining quality health care for all South Carolinians. To maintaining quality health care for all South Carolinians. And to the task of improving the training and ethics of physicians and to the task of improving the training and education of physicians. I shall hold the Constitution and bylaws of the South Carolina Medical Association at all times. I shall uphold the Constitution and bylaws of the South Carolina Medical Association at all times. I shall champion the cause of freedom, freedom and medical practice and fairness to all South Carolinians. I shall champion the cause of freedom in medical practice and fairness to all South Carolinians. To these duties and obligations, I pledge myself, so help me God. To these duties and obligations, I pledge myself, so help me God. It is now my pleasure to declare that you are duly installed as the 150th president of the South Carolina Medical Association, and congratulations. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, trustees, Dr. Wilson, Dr. Lindstrom, honored guests, family and friends, you did not know that you just elected John Boehner. <laughs> I am truly humbled and honored to be the 150th president of the South Carolina Medical Association. I would personally like to thank Dr. Teresitas for the great job he did this past year representing us. I also want to recognize the Board of Trustees for their time and effort they spend on behalf of all physicians of South Carolina. I want you all to stand and so that we can give you a round of applause. Trustees. Before I begin my speech, I would like to take a moment to recognize my family and friends. First, my son, Michael, a banker and his wife, Amy, my son, Andy, a lawyer, and his wife, Courtney, my daughter, Sarah, an educational research advisor with the Florida Virtual Schools, and her husband, Jeff, my son, Joseph, a pediatrician, and his wife, Leslie, and my daughter, Frances, an neonatal ICU nurse, and lastly, my sister-in-law, the other Francis, and our family. The married children have given us seven, soon to be eight grandchildren. Please stand so that everyone will recognize you, please, and know who you are. <laughs> our best beach buddies are here from Charleston, the Cygnuses. Then there are friends from Orangeburg, especially Connie Wise, who ran my office for many years, and her husband, Mike. Then there are other friends from Orangeburg, the Cohens, the Dixons, the McDaniels, the Williams, and the Rosdicks, who are gracious enough to come spend this time with us. It is also a privilege to have a friend, mentor, and past president of the AMA, Dr. Randy Smoke, and his wife, Sandra. Other colleagues include Dr. and Mrs. Ira Horton and Dr. and Mrs. Jack Rainey. And I certainly cannot leave out our District 8 trustee, Dr. Dallas Lovelace, and his wife, Debbie. The Linsons and Carmichael's friends from Southern Mississippi came all the, all the way from Mississippi, as well as a past president of Southern Medical, Dr. Jan Basil and his wife, Joellen, from Charleston. 
We also have the president of the Southern Medical Alliance, Dr. Nancy Swikert, and her husband, Don. And Mr. Ed Waldron, the CEO of Southern Medical, is also here with us tonight. Would you all please stand and be recognized? <laughs> Doctors Black and Teresitas, in their last two inaugural addresses, made reference to the fact that they had a medical heritage. Mine was drastically different. As is Dr. Wilson, I was a preacher's kid, and I was taught to have love and compassion for our fellow human beings and to try to make a difference in those lives that we touched. If you think about it, something in your life gave you those same traits. This was made real to me when I developed pneumonia at the age of 10 and Dr. Claude Bays in Lexington, Kentucky actually made a house call. When he came to her home, I remember in his black bag this very large syringe <laughs> and an even larger needle which was filled with penicillin. While it stung like fire, I recall being on the road to recovery the very next morning. I soon realized that medicine was my calling but it is in organized medicine that I realize that we as physicians must also care for each other. Being a part of the SCMA Board of Trustees has allowed me to realize this. As your SCMA president, I want to constantly remind you that there, while there is much adversity, there is much opportunity for us to make a difference in the lives of many who depend upon us. Let me share a story with you. Two elderly gentlemen coming around the corner at Walmart banged their carts together. The first one asked, what are you doing? And the reply is, looking for my wife. What are you doing? I'm looking for mine too. What does yours look like? Well, she's 27, got long blonde hair, a great figure, and wearing the tightest shorts I've ever seen. <laughs> what does yours look like? Never mind, let's go look for yours. <laughs> Now you see that one man's adversity became another man's opportunity. <laughs> when we took our Hippocratic Oath, we promised to try and make opportunity for healing out of our patient's adversity. One section of the Hippocratic Oath says, I will prevent disease whenever I can, for, for prevention is preferable to cure. Dr. Charles Bryan, in a recent article in our SCMA journal, detailing how he envisioned the practice of medicine in the future and change it will. It is as if somewhere, someone had an aha moment. We will focus mainly on health, not disease, where healthcare is a personal responsibility not viewed as a right. We will be asked to practice medicine based on good, sound, scientific evidence. For if we don't, we won't be paid. All payments, whether from government or institutions or private insurers, want to get the most for their money. While this sounds good on paper, we all, too many, all know too many times that our patients are just not compliant. This article further suggests that beginning in grammar school onward that health is a personal responsibility. A great concept, but teaching that when teachers are already having a hard time getting across reading and writing and arithmetic may be a long undertaking. We have had the opportunity to educate our legislators. There are those who would want to practice medicine based on changing the law rather than through obtaining the proper training. This becomes not a turf war, as some would suggest, but a patient safety issue. Many without training are just waiting to get their foot in the door. We must, not, we must ensure that this doesn't happen. We must make a difference. Additionally, we have met with Director Keck and others from Health and Human Services to help them understand that we want to make health care in South Carolina better and have even suggested ways to appropriately spend their limited reserves to do this. We will continue to care for the poor of this great state, yet we are working tirelessly on your behalf so that they understand the plight of payment cuts to physicians, especially those who practice in rural areas. We have tried to stress that a visit to the emergency room is far more expensive than office care. Diabetes, hypertension, and heart disease, for instance, 
do not go away with a single emergency room visit, but we know that adequate, continuous care of the patient produces better health. We continue to be ever vigilant about the health care law passed by Congress and the effect it will have on physicians and patients alike. Many, many more patients will be included in this new law and stress the system that is currently in place. We must be prepared for the future by being proactive now. Finally, we must remember that in all we do, we must take care of each other. The motto of my home state, Kentucky, is united we stand, divided we fall. That can easily translate into the voice of one, the power of many. Sound familiar? It is what you must remember when we call upon you for your support, whether it is in membership dues, contributions to MedPAC, or a phone call to the legislators. In the end, it is about the care and safety of our patients. We must make a difference. We must not, we cannot fail. Now, when I introduced my family, you noticed I left out one special person. And when I practiced giving my speech uh, to my wife and daughter, Frances said, you left out mom. So I'm going to try to not to leave her out. When she became president of the Southern Medical Association Alliance, she said, I would like to say something nice about my husband, but I can't. <laughs> I will try to do better. I remember many years ago seeing this blue-eyed beauty in the hospital canteen. I thought to myself, well, never mind what I thought. <laughs> but to say, suffice it to say that the chase began and she finally slowed down long enough for me to catch her. As those of you who are spouses of physicians know, a medical marriage is truly unique. During the course of our practice, we experienced the emotional highs of babies born and the lows of lives lost. The highs of actually getting paid for what we do and the lows of reimbursement rates being cut. She has been my constant support. She has made our home a place that I could come at the end of the day and get ready to face tomorrow. She has made a difference in my life. In closing, I would like to thank Todd Atwater and his great staff who worked tirelessly every day in our behalf. Heather Black has been exceptional in planning this meeting, and when you see her, be sure to say thanks. Kate Crosby is invaluable when it comes to editing all that I write. And if you could see the rough drafts I give her, you would know she is really special. <laughs> Thank you again for allowing me to serve as your 150th president. It is an honor and privilege I will not take lightly as I represent you throughout the state. I look forward to visiting each society throughout the coming year. Now the glasses are getting ice put in them, and I think the meals are ready. I know I am. Let's go have some fun. Thank you.